Um, so I'm glad um, to be here with you guys. I watched you at the robotics club and saw how enthusiastic you were, and I was like, oh, I can talk to them. So um, tell me how I do at the end if I need to not use so many ums or mm or whatever, okay? <laughs> um, so basically, I work for a company that's right next to JJ Jump. Um, so if you're ever in JJ Jump, feel free to come next door if you don't want to jump, whatever. Um, and we build and sell um, multi-rotor helicopters. So um, this one is a hexacopter. Probably most of you, most of you know it's got six, uh, six arms on it and six blades. So um, basically what we do is um, we build the copters for people wanting to purchase them for everything from just taking photos in the air and videos to agriculture and healthy, helping farmers to um, uh, use these for crop management, um, firefighters with uh, FLIR cameras, infrared with cameras, um, um, search and rescue. There's like a multitude of applications and uh, I'm sure most of you have started to maybe seen these, like someone said he saw someone fly in, like one like that little white one right there. And um, basically the reason I wanted to come and talk to you guys is because um, this is a really growing uh, industry. It's, uh, it's um, the technology is just now, they're just now starting to understand what you can use these for and um, with something like that little white one, pretty much anyone could have one right now. And you can put a GoPro camera on that white one and get aerial videos and photos. So um, I just kind of wanted to bring it in here and show you guys and let you see one up close and maybe fly one. Um, basically all of them are equipped, they all run off of batteries. Um, that runs off of um, a 3-cell 2200. This, run, this one takes a six cell battery, um, a 10,000 milliamp battery. Uh, so a, a pretty big one. Um, this one can carry a large camera and get about 10 minute flight time. It could go higher than 400 feet, but the FAA, which rules the air, says not to go above 400 feet for safety reasons. Um, like there's planes and stuff up there. So um, this one is really compactable. All the arms, actually, um, you can open all the arms and break it down very quick. Um, this has, and this is made in, this one's made in China, as is that one, but we also sell systems that are made in New Zealand. So right now, um, as the technology advances, more and more companies are going to be trying to, you know, make them stronger, better, more reliable. Um, this has an autopilot in it that allows you to use Google Maps and to calculate your GPS coordinates. So if I wanted it to, I could tell it out to go there, 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 and there, and it would do that, and I wouldn't have to do a thing. So that really helps with, for instance, farmers and precision agriculture, that they can grid their land, and this will just fly on the grid, and it will snap pictures the whole way, and then they can take those pictures and do like a 3D model or they could do photogrammetry with it. And they could see with the right kind of camera where they have dead vegetation or live. Or for instance, we just did a search, uh, search and rescue mission and we can configure waypoints to go further than what we can see with our eyes so that it can effectively search for someone and do a pattern so that we can line that up and then see if we can spot um, what we're looking for. So, um, so all of these copters have GPS in them. Um, they all have little things in them called an IOSD that gives you data. It reads the data down of your altitude, um, your battery voltage. Uh, it gives you a um, it gives you a picture, a artificial horizon, so you can see what direction you're pointed. Because once it's up in the air and you're using your remote. It's very hard to see sometimes which way you're going, and just like with, I imagine, your robots, you have to go certain ways, and if you turn it around... It's harder. Yeah, you have to do the opposite, right's left, left is right, yeah. 
So it's the same thing with these, but you can imagine when it's 200 feet up in the air, sometimes that can be hard to see. So there's a data reader in it. Um, they have, right now, uh, the only thing that's really lagging in this technology is flight time. This only gets about 10 minutes. Um, those ones will get about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and then fixed wing, which just have, you know, one wing, those will get about an hour. Um, but all the multi-rotors are really only going to get about 25 minutes right now. And for people doing search and rescue, agriculture, firefighting, they need a little bit more flight time. So that technology is still lagging, but a lot of people are hard at work on it. Um, this is uh, the camera gimbal, and this does a full 360 pan. Once this is turned on, this camera gimbal will fix forward and it will be completely steady. So I could take this copter and I could do this, and the gimbal isn't going to move. It's just going to sit there. Um, it's a brushless gimbal. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, and as someone noted, these are carbon fiber propellers. Um, and uh, generally with the larger systems, we go with um, like 3510 motors and 12 inch props or sometimes 14 inch. Uh, always a six cell battery. And... Um, yeah, so I don't know, Did you guys have questions? And Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was watching Sons of Guns, and there was one project they had where they took a small uh, automatic pistol, and they mounted it facing down on a quadcopter like that. How much can one of those fit? Yeah, so um, we've got octocopters. In fact... Uh, National Geographic has a show out right now called Showdown of the Unbeatables, and they take, I don't know, have any of you guys seen that? Showdown of the Unbeatables? If you have Comcast, or you can go to our web uh, our website also, I can send the link, and you guys can go there. It's a new show that takes two forms of uh, new technology, and then they battle it out against each other uh, for an ultimate winner. So they invited us down, and we didn't know who we were going to have to battle it out against. They don't tell you that. All we know is that we have a $20,000 system that we're taking it, up, taking it down to California, and we have to go head-to-head -head with some other major form of technology. And it ended up we had to go against a uh, track um, laser rifle. Oh. <laughs> that basically um, you put in your target, and then it shoots for you. Wow. So if you're interested, you can watch it on our, on, our, um, on our website. That's where it's at, or on our Vimeo, and I can provide you guys with the link. Um, but who do you guys think wins? The laser track rifle that can coordinate the target and then it fires itself? Or our octocopter with two more arms? Um, yeah. Go for it. I would think the other one would win since you can literally put it in the target as like real life aimbot. Mm hmm Okay. Um, I think it would be the octocopter because, um, well, it actually depends if the laser can rotate. So if you have to constantly adjust it and it's moving, it would be pretty hard to shoot. Or you could lose it. So that's actually a good point. Um, is that was one of the problems. We won. Um, they couldn't shoot us down. Um, we had to do, we have an amazing pilot. His name's Kenny McDonald. He's been actually... The same as you guys, messing with all kinds of electronics and stuff since he was like this big. And uh, he's been flying RC and doing RC cars forever and he's an amazing pilot now. And he, they could not get him. He was taunting them with the copter kind of like doing this kind of stuff. <laughs> and they were getting mad and they just couldn't shoot him. Um, and in the end, they asked to go for a second round, and they would pay for it if they hit us. And they did hit us, but they hit a servo. And so it didn't actually take the copter down. It just, um, these are retractable landing gears, by the way. So these come up. So this can do a full 360. This comes up. So when you hit the servo, the landing gear came down, and that was it. So. Yeah. Um. I was going to say it would probably be the octocopter if you had a human flying it, but if you have the GPS flying it, just going from point to point to point, then and just doing that over and over again, then the laser rifle, they might have 
put a program in there so they can learn. So if it just keeps doing that same points, then it'll figure out where to lead it and then just shoot. And then it'll, the optocopter, the bullet will be flying this way and then it'll fly to each other. Well, the interesting thing is, and I agree with your point, but the interesting thing is, is that these GPSs, um, you can configure it. You can tell it basically, once you get to this GPS coordinate, I want you to speed up to this rate and go this height to the next coordinate. So realistically, he could have done a figure eight, or he could have done like a smiley face with a, like a tongue sticking out or something, you know, and told it to go to all those places and at different paces so that they wouldn't have been able to predict where he where he was ultimately like, right. yeah so but in the end we were the winners so um, it's kind of cool you guys should check out this show anyways because it's cool technology that they battle it out against and it's on Nat Geo which I think is like 200 station or something so I'll watch it on yeah <laughs> and, and, and it's on demand too so okay. um how much can how much can one of those be like that like the gift just that that, that that like that one so that one right there is a first version. It's called um, a Phantom. It's a Phantom One first version, which started out at about eight hundred dollars last year. They've already come out with four new models. So that kind of tells you how quick the technology is moving. Um, and just so you know, they figure in the next five years that um, some people call them unmanned aerial systems or an unmanned aerial vehicle or a drone or a multi-rotor, or a flying camera, or an expensive toy. Those are kind of the general names for them. Um, but they expect it to be a $5 billion a year industry in the next five years. Um, we work with uh, OSU, we work with several other universities that are buying mostly the autopilots and trying to learn how to bring this technology into the schools to be able to train you guys like your age when you're getting out of school, they're, they're trying to think about that right now. Um, because here in the U.S., this technology is lagging, whereas in a lot of other countries, it's, there's already regulations in place. Um, so, sorry, I got off track because I have uh, like squirrel syndrome. Um, so that one's 479 now. A year ago, it was like 800. Uh, now there's a newer model that gets, that one gets 10 minutes of flight time. There's a newer model that gets 20 minutes of flight time that also does waypoint flying with Google Maps, um, but you have to get some added components. But um, And then there's two other versions that go up to $12.99. So for the consumer market, $12.99 and below. For the pro line stuff, $10,000 and above. <laughs> so there's a big difference. Then there's the middle of the ground things. Uh, there's another... Uh, uh, hexacopter um, that is about 5,000 but it's not as nice as this <laughs> but it's still nice <laughs> okay I don't know who's next so here we'll go here and make our way around oh I'm gonna get a break to just look at these yeah for sure yeah um well I don't know what you're yeah we got an hour so yeah oh okay cool okay so uh, in that TV show when like if something got totally destroyed, would they like pay for it or? Well, the first time no, but since the the guys with the track point rifle were not very happy that they couldn't shoot us down. In fact, at one point it looks like they're gonna cry in the video, oh. and um, so what happened behind the scenes? Because it's funny, reality TV isn't so real. We sat there like they're like, well, they took this piece and this piece and stitched it together, and this piece and this piece. And a part where you see the helicopter get stuck, it got stuck for like two seconds, and they make it look like a long time. But I shouldn't tell you that because that's kind of part of the fun, but um, the drama of it. Um, but they offered to pay if we would go a second round, and if they could shoot us down, then they would pay for it. So we were like, okay, and they still couldn't. But I would have them shoot down and then just have <laughs> We do at this shop though, if you guys ever stop by, we do have um, the servo with the bullet hole through it as like a souvenir. But does the bullet go clean through? Or is it clean? Yeah, it went clean through. Um, we used a different system. We used a system out of New Zealand. So there's kind of like the servo thing down here that releases the landing gear and that's what got hit. Oh, so it kind of went 
it, it instead went, of going up, it kind of went like that. Yeah, yeah, oh. exactly. Whoops. Um, okay. Are those fairly easy to fly? So, actually they are. Um, I don't know, I didn't know if we would be able to fly today or not, or I could do a demo. Um, but what happens is basically I can take that copter and I can put it up in GPS and I can take my hand off of the radio and it's going to just hover. It's basically going to kind of do this. It's not going to stay in exactly the same spot because there's some wind. It's kind of got to fight the wind just a little bit. And so what it does is it just kind of does a circle. Um, there's another mode that I can put it in to, it's called attitude. And attitude is like, it's like having a manual car and you have an automatic car and then an in-between car. So it's not manual where you have to do all the work, which it does have a function for manual, which I don't know how to fly. But if you can fly manual, I could do flips with that. But I can't, I so a, and I'm too I scared have a to try small it. Version of them and they're so much fun. The little handheld one? Yeah. Yeah. Where you can just throw it up and then We kill those. My kids just kill them in one day, so now they fly this. No, I, have, <laughs> I have one that's like hundred and fifty dollars that I got at a hobby shop. Yeah. And I do you don't pull have the parts off of it and all that. Sorry, honey, your arm's probably getting okay. tired over here, huh? Um, are we gonna be able to see you fly? Um, I don't know if I can fly here or not. I mean, um... This shouldn't be a problem. we got the big field back here. Okay, so. perfect. Then, yes, you'll get to see me fly it. We're going to fly until someone tells us no. Yeah. There's, there's I brought three batteries. So. Yeah, but we can go over here. Oh, well, we can put it up and then take the video off. Dexter, you're not a yeah. terrorist. Um, and I think someone asked me about the payload for these. I did. Um... So you'll see in our video, actually, in that, in that video, if you watch it, that we lift a pumpkin. Um, so with the larger systems, you get a larger payload. Um, smaller systems, smaller payload. Um, I did hang a blazer shirt from that last week, though, uh, to represent. Uh, it did. It kind of threw it off course a little bit, but I was trying to take, we called it drony, so I'm trying to get the blazer shirt and pilot it all at the same time. It's kind of a mess, but... Uh, what was the size of the rifle? Like, what, what was it? What was the bullet size? That I'm not sure about. Probably seven. I don't know much about rifles. Um, well, I don't see how that would be a problem, because they are really simple to fly, so... Just don't break it. So, also one thing is um, that I kind of wanted to touch on because you guys are on the edge of, on the cutting edge of technology. It's something that you're interested in. Yeah. So there's cutting edge and then there's bleeding edge. Um, everything with these is bleeding edge right now. Uh, what we find a big problem in, in is that um, there's not enough experienced people. And so we find that a lot of these consumer uh, copters. The hard part is that uh, people that have no technical experience, they've never worked on anything before, they want everything out of box to work, um, don't realize that those still are, they're, they're, it's technology. It's, there's wires, there's GPS in it. Um, if you spray paint that, the you can mess with the GPS, yeah, you know, um, it can, and ultimately it could fly away then. Go away. Go away. Yeah, so what we're finding right now is that, um, is that as, as cool as they are, a lot of people are kind of starting to give them a bad rap. Um, a lot of stuff on the news is kind of trying to make these sound really, really bad. Um, and what we are realizing um, is that there's a lot of really cool applications. Um, the applications don't don't end. It's however far your mind can go, these things can do. Um, the reason that I got into this is I started about a year and a half ago. Um, I went to the company and I knew about them and I'd seen their footage and I basically hounded them for about four months to give me a job. Um, and the reason for that is because I was in Asia when the 2004 tsunami hit, the really big one, not the Japan one, but the the large one before that, and I was also there for a flash flood 
um, that wiped out kind of a whole village, and it was due to uh, deforestation, had eroded the soil. And um, those two events kind of changed everything for me, and I realized that the camera strapped on here, if you put a FLIR camera on, you could get thermal imaging and be able to find someone. Or with a servo, you could drop a cell phone or something to someone where people couldn't reach, or you could do, uh, you could go out, you know, in disaster areas and, and, and do uh, search and rescue or relief, or there's so many different applications, and so that's how I got into it. And um, just to talk to the ladies really quick, um, what I find really interesting about this industry is that uh, there's not very many girls in it, and uh, it's really too bad because it's really fun. Um, it's really fun. It gives you a lot of excitement, a lot of adventure. Um, you can basically go all over the world if you can pilot. You can do a lot of cool missions um, and be part of a really cool um, cutting edge technology. So um, for me, I think it's, uh, it's just a really fascinating industry. Oh, oh I'm sorry. How fast can one of them go? Okay, so that's a good question. And how long can you do it to 100? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, with these, this will go 30 miles an hour. They can move very fast. Um, that one, I haven't ever tested it, and I don't know the exact specs, but um, I'll gun it out there, and you can see how fast it goes. Um, the, with this one, the what's the metal that it's made out of? This? Yeah. Um, generally, they're made out of um, out of a carbon fiber. Um, this one, you know what? I'm not exactly sure. It's not aluminum. Um, or titanium. That's the other one. Um, yes, I guess. The octocopter that you see is titanium. It's titanium? It's titanium. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one's not titanium, and I can't remember what the arms are made out of. Is it? Maybe you can feel it and tell. Is it? Uh, are any of you good with that? Just by well, tapping on it. Most of the time, you can't just tap on it. Oh, you, you just tap? It's because of the um, uh, the paint that they put on it, which messes with the texture. Mm. So, um, I've only been there a year and a half, and I haven't been in the back end. So that's actually my next goal is to build them. Um, I've tinkered. Um, I actually built the core to this, um, but I didn't do the wiring. I put it all together, but I didn't get to do the wiring. Um, so I, I built, but to, I mean, for you guys, you have a knowledge I couldn't even comprehend. I mean, I have never done anything with technology until the last year and a half. And then they made me get a cell phone, too, and I was like, ah, my mind's going to be blown. But it's so interesting to me that... Um, you know, uh, the progression of these and where they can go that I've really stuck with it. Um, I wish that I would have been in a cool class like this when I was younger. What do you do? Like, what do you specifically do with your job? Yeah, so I do, uh, number one is I do all the social media. Uh, number two is um, I do uh, some of the outreach. So I work with putting us in certain shows, like we were just out at... Um, the Aviation and Space Museum or the Spruce Gooses doing a, doing a farming show. Um, we were also just down in Vegas for, it's called NAB, and it's the National Association of Broadcasters, so I set us up with that. And that is like, I walked in, I was yeah. like, oh, the brain waves in here. Like, all the newest new technology is there, and it's five days of just, like, awesomeness. <laughs> um, so I do that and then um, I also do sales and I fly. So um, my next goal will be to actually get out and do more, fly more flying because we do uh, services also. We go out and we, we take these out and companies pay us to take photos or videos. Um, are any of them made out of carbonatinium? Um, not that I know of. There could be. There's a lot of different types of, uh, a lot of different companies out there. I know it's um, fairly new and relatively light because it's lighter 
than um, titanium, but heavier than carbon, and it's stronger because it's a blend of them. I think I just saw some arms for it's called a flame wheel F550, and they were some kind of titanium arm, but I can't remember exactly what they were made out of. There's a lot of different stuff out there, though. They're coming. It's a really cool metal. Is it? Yes. Or I don't even know if it's a metal because it has carbon fiber in it. Well, one thing that you have to, one thing that I do know is you have to be careful of what you use in conjunction with um, with your flight controllers, with your GPS and stuff, because, um, I mean, if Lawrence, our the co-owner and technician, came in here, like he would blow your mind with his knowledge of just how all of the mechanics of it work. But there's certain things like there's transmitters on here that work with your radio. So you've got your so you can get a live video feed from your camera down to a monitor. And um, if your transmitter isn't pointed in a certain direction and your antenna is maybe going this way and your transmitter is going this way, you can completely lose signal. So I mean everything is very um, Everything, how we build it, is very technical um, so that there is no distortion, there's no interference. Um, is there any programming to um, keep it from crashing if it were on manual mode? Or is it completely 100% manual? Uh, it would be 100% 100 manual. So actually, if you're copter, most people don't fly in manual mode. Um, so if your copter is in GPS and it just starts acting funky and going home, there's actually fail-safe features to where you're supposed to be able to uh, flip a switch and it will bring it home to you. Or you can flip it in manual and try and control it yourself. Yeah. I was just thinking about if it were going and you over-rotated because of how it flies to the side, would if, it, if there was any programming to stop the motor from going too fast and flipping the cocktail. Oh, you know, um, Kenny, who is one of our pilots, uh, he flies 3D heli. I don't know if any of you have seen that. It's basically, it's a, it's a very large single rotor helicopter that you can do flips with, and it's done in such a way that it looks like a 3D. Like, it looks like it's coming at you, but it's up there, and it's a big helicopter just doing flips and stuff. And he has no problem putting this into manual and could flip it as well, you know. Um, but most of us wouldn't. <laughs> you, I mean, you have to practice some serious, like, um, uh, sim on your computer to get that good. Um, so also, about the transmitter and receivers, um, generally we use a 5.8 transmitter and receiver. Um, sometimes we'll use a 1.3, so if someone's going to be flying let's say in an area where they're um, going to be going over kind of over mountains or there's <coughs> a lot of trees that will create an interference and it will get in the way of the 5.8 so we'll use a 1.3 and 1.3 transmitter is kind of like <coughs> AM radio it's like it can penetrate better when you're on the middle of nowhere like AM radio always comes in but it doesn't really sound that good. If you're in the city, you're not going to really listen to AM radio because it kind of sounds funky. But it's really good if you're out in the middle of nowhere. That's kind of how the transmitters are. Um, 5.8 is really good if you don't have a lot of interference. 1.3 is really good if you have interference. So those are things that we have to take into consideration when we're working with a customer. And so, what if, so if you're flying on the manual, how far? Did it go before you even lose a signal? Like how far it fly? Yeah, so with this one, you're looking at about a thousand feet, uh, about a thousand feet up and about 500 feet out. Um, now, when you have a monitor on there, that's kind of a different story. Your monitor can lose connection. Um, but your radio won't. Like your ra your um, monitor, your video feed might cut out, but your radio won't. Um, also with this, if I put an autopilot on and I told it to go to my work next to JJ Jump, um, it would just keep going there until it runs out of battery. 
And then fall from the sky. Like and then we just fall. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it will gonna keep going. Um, but your luckily your GPS you use it on you can use it on a PC or there's ones that you can use on an iPhone or an iPad or Android or whatever. And it will tell you how long it will take to complete the the um, to get to the GPS coordinates that you put in. It, it will give you an idea of how long that's going to take. So that that doesn't happen. Do I fly? <laughs> Do you guys want to go outside? Yeah. 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 yeah.